Hey folks, welcome to e-commerce 360. Today we are brewing a fantastic conversation with an entrepreneur who is shaking up the world of coffee. Uh, joining us is the founder of Fredello Coffee Roasters, uh, Russ Profinton. Um, so let's jump right in, Russ, and um, tell us a bit about yourself. Well, thanks for having me. First, uh, it's, it's an honor to be chosen to speak with you all today. So thank you very much. Uh, as you mentioned, the, the owner and founder of Fertello Coffee Roasters, we're a family-run business. This mm -hmm. is our 50th anniversary in the coffee industry. So it's actually a second generation. Uh, my parents started this back in 1974, uh, and then the business has changed and evolved over the years uh, to where it is today, uh, called Fertello Coffee Roasters. And Fertello is Italian for brother, and my business partner is my brother. Uh, so it is 100% family-owned and operated in Calgary, Alberta. And we import coffee directly with uh, the producers in the regions we work. Uh, and we import green coffee and roast it and then offer it to many different companies, uh, including cafes, restaurants, office towers, uh, some grocery channels, and online as well. That's brilliant. Um, so, and I also know that there is like a cult like following for your coffee. I just read it uh, in one news item. So, congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, I wanted to know what actually triggered or what was the, uh, you know, what instigated you to actually start the online selling part of your business and when did it really start? Was it, and did you look into the challenges of starting online before you started or you just wanted to, you know, have an additional channel? Yeah, it was kind of a, not what I would, don't want to say by accident, but it was an afterthought for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. We had our, our website built and it was uh, speaking mostly towards wholesale customers. Uh, that was our focus and our target uh, 100%. And within our website were all of our items and coffees and teas that we would offer to our wholesale accounts as well. Uh, this was on WooCommerce. Mm -hmm. And it was difficult to get WooCommerce to to work well with an online platform. So we really didn't put much thought into it. Um, it seemed everything we wanted to do was extras and plugins and a bit clumsy. Um, more importantly, it wasn't that popular to the end consumers at this point. This was many years ago. Uh, with platforms like Amazon and that becoming more popular uh, increasingly mm -hmm. year over year, one of their top selling items on Amazon is actually coffee. So that was what really started people getting used to the idea of purchasing coffee online. Uh, it really wasn't until COVID happened that we were excited about the opportunity that e-commerce could bring. Uh, during that time, we decided to ship platforms into Shopify and restructured our website to be more uh, of a, a tool to use to the end user. Mm -hmm. So we're now creating a secondary website for wholesale uh, that mm -hmm. can use that platform for ordering and communicate to them directly through that one. But now our main website is targeted towards uh, the end consumers. Um, that's amazing. So uh, I think a lot of people made the decision to switch to e-commerce during the COVID. Uh, so that was like a wake up call for a lot of people. And I'm mm -hmm. glad you guys are going um, you know, online. So uh, moving online comes with its own challenges, right? So mm -hmm. what was the biggest? challenge the first biggest challenge i'm sure like even today you're having some challenges but what was your first oh, yes, biggest of course challenge? yeah uh, uh, well at the beginning the biggest one was trying to get customers to realize we were there so mm. we're very well known in uh, southern alberta especially calgary where we operate but mm -hmm. outside of calgary we aren't that large of a brand if you're within the industry, you know who you are. But if you're a consumer within your home, chances are you you have not heard of Fratello Coffee Roasters uh, because we're a wholesale operation. We don't have uh, our own storefronts where we could create a brand to the end user. So the biggest uh, issue we had was getting word out, getting people to uh, recognize this platform as a place to go shopping. Uh, outside of that, the, the hardest issue in Canada anyway is shipping costs. Hmm. Just such such a large territory that the shipping costs to go across the country are more expensive than the coffee itself. So it's really mm -hmm. prohibitive in in wanting to market yourself in, in all areas in Canada. Hmm. In, in the US, I know that isn't as big an issue. The the shipping rates are much more competitive. 
That's amazing. Um, also, when you are actually moving online, um, one thing that comes across is differentiating your brand versus other brands because coffee is a wildly competitive space. And uh, was there anything that you tried around branding to differentiate your brand against others? Um, especially in Canada, if you see there are like a million coffee mm. brands, right? So, uh, so how many. do you differentiate? Yeah. Uh, first thing we were working on was the content on our site. So trying to uh, create internal contact uh, and links that would get us higher ratings within Google searches. Uh, so that involved a lot of blog work and writing specifically to the end user. Um, a lot of the blogs we were writing were about education, how to brew properly, how to grind properly, mm -hmm. things that people might want to know, mm -hmm. uh, how to create their coffee to taste like it does when a barista makes it. Uh, and again, this really took off during COVID because people mm -hmm. were forced to start consuming at home and a lot of people didn't know how. Mm -hmm. So we thought that that content would be a driver to get people to find it through our organic search engines. Um, secondary was the new platform Shopify. We wanted to gamify the purchasing. So mm -hmm. instead of just having coffee available, it was subscription services it was uh, discounts on bulk purchasing mm -hmm. uh, VIP points programs so that people can sign up and become a member and get discounts and rewards for its future purchases. So trying to create um, ways to want them to come back and reuse your platform uh, versus just trying a bag and then trying someone else's and kind of wandering away and being lost is, is how can we keep them continually coming back to our store to purchase mm -hmm. more. Uh, so earlier in our conversation, um, I mentioned you have like a cult like following, right, among customers, especially in Calgary. So how do you uh, keep up with the demands of customers and how do you continue nurturing uh, the new customers? Do you have, uh, uh, you know, separate um, coffee, you know, brands, like not brands, but do you have separate uh, kind of category for them so that you can actually, you know, give into their needs and demands? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, because we are a wholesale operator, the size of our roasting is larger than most startups. So mm -hmm. as far as keeping up with the increased demand for online, uh, for us, we're blessed that we didn't have that issue. It could easily fall within our production. The challenge became doing lots of small packaging. Mm -hmm. Because we're a little bit larger on the roasting size, we're used to shipping large bags and large boxes and pallets of coffee versus little bags in little boxes. Uh, and we wanted that coffee going to the end consumer to be as fresh as possible. So it was around, um, uh, the issue we're trying to solve, I guess, was around a warehouse spacing for small retail packaging and turning that inventory fast enough that when the customer is getting the bag, they're actually surprised at the roast date because they can see right on the front of the bag when it was manufactured. So we want them to see how fresh it is, not not mm -hmm. a best before date. <laughs> what, what does a best before date mean in mm -hmm. coffee? It's, yeah. I'd rather promote how fresh it was. So yeah. that was something we needed to learn. Um, were, were the PARs to put in place to give us uh, the cues to produce more or less retail coffee to be shipping online. And coming up with new flavors to get it to the yep, yep. price demand. Exactly. Something new, at least once a quarter, we're introducing uh, fresh new products as well. Mm -hmm. something for them to be excited about to try. That's amazing. So we're almost towards the end. Uh, as a wrap-up, what, uh, what is the one piece of advice that you would leave um, upcoming entrepreneur, uh, not mm -hmm. necessarily in the coffee world, but just an entrepreneur who wants to start a business um, in any product or retail? Mm -hmm. uh, what would be your advice to them? Or online, I would think it's important to start to understand the costs associated with with marketing shipping packaging mm. uh invoicing warehousing just what are those behind the scene costs associated with getting any product to the end user uh, most of your sales especially at the beginning are going to be when you're doing an online promotion or a sale right you're discounting the product giving them a reason to try it and from that price, removing all of those other costs that I just mentioned to see what you're actually left with profit wise. And are you happy with that, right? 
base your pricing model around <laughs> all of those costs built into it, don't start at a high price and assume you've got enough margin. See what the minimum margin is you can accept and build build your program up from that, from that point. That was a super practical advice. Um, so if you're just passion is not enough, but you have to have the practical side of things as well. That right. was a great passion advice. Will, yeah, passion will keep you motivated, right? To, to want to keep going. But if there's but no profit, uh, then then it's not sustainable. Absolutely. Um, so thank you so much. We hope this conversation was um, you know, useful for our and inspiring for our uh, viewers. Thank you so much, Raz, for coming on the show today. I appreciate and it. Thank you so much. And uh, your strategies, some of your strategies. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.